Hello, Cycle Stormers. Brian Cook here today. We're playing my favorite popper deck. Obviously, I'm talking about Cycle Storm. About 30 days ago, I uploaded a video that you can find in the card above where I debuted the Streets of New Capenna lands in Cycle Storm. Today, in this specific deck list I'll be talking about right now, it's Obscure Stormfront. In that video, it was Maestro's Theater. So I was really impressed by those lands because they provide mana consistency uh, and you never really end up with colorless mana. On top of that, you gain life, which is really great with Street Wraith. So I've just been loving these lands. I don't plan on switching back to Ash Barons anytime soon. Okay, so one of the things that it does, like I said, is provide mana consistency, which opens up Otherworldly Gaze as a playable card. This is a card that I play in Modern and Underworld Breach combo because it's so great at filling up the graveyard, which is really what we're trying to do here. So I've been just in love with this card over the last month or so. Uh, and if you're interested in watching this, there is a members exclusive video that you can find in the card above where I play this and I do relatively well. After playing that league, I was discussing with some other Cycle Storm players uh, possible ways of going pure Grixis, okay? And what came up was in our discussion, Vision Charm. So you can mill yourself for four, which is really great with Songs of the Damned and Reaping the Graves because it does fuel you, which is nice. It's not... Uh, surveil so you don't get to choose to keep cards on top like you would otherworldly gaze it is a straight mill four so vision charm mill four the middle mode changes the land type so in pauper you can change island to swamp and all of a sudden your opponent can't cast counter spells which is really really fascinating so uh, i've had that come up once or twice it's cool when it happens but it's not super often and then target artifact phases out so you can Target a Relic of Progenus or a Nile Spell Bomb, forcing your opponent to sacrifice it if they so choose. And that has been good. So I've been testing these cards for the last three or so weeks, maybe one league a week. So I've played like three or four, maybe five leagues. And they've been fine. But last night I tried to record a league and sort of everything that I felt was wrong with it happened all at once. Um... Sorry, the mana base is wrong here. This is what I played last night. Four Swamp, Three Island. Uh, so everything I've thought about this deck sort of, it all went poorly and it was all things that I had been thinking about and it sort of was a, an awakening for me. So the first thing was, uh, when discussing this deck with other Cycle Storm pilots, the emphasis on Swamps was really high. I had a number of mulligans where I opened up uh, other really gaze Swamp and that doesn't do it. So... That was sort of frustrating, where if I had an island, I could have kept those hands easily. And I've been playing four island, three swamp, and I sort of talked back into the other one. I'm not trying to blame anyone here, by the way. I'm just discussing events that happened. It was ultimately my decision to play four swamps, don't get me wrong. But uh, I was sort of convinced to go that route. So that happened. I had a game where I actually drew all four basic swamps and never searched them up and then lost because I didn't have a blue source, which is incredibly frustrating. Um, and I had another game and this is one almost seems unbelievable, but it's actually what happened. I had seven cards left in my deck. Two of them were reaping the graves. Two of them were songs of the damned. And another one was the repository scob. And I just could not believe it. And I was like, okay, you know, that's frustrating. This is game three of a match. And that happens to me. I guess I lose. And then in the next round, I lost game two after losing game one. Uh, I lost game two where the bottom 10 cards in my deck had triple reaping the graves and a songs in there. And I was just like, come on. Uh, I just like couldn't seem to catch a break. Uh, and it sort of made me start to reevaluate some things. So I also lost a lot of games to turn one Relic of Progenitus, which was frustrating. So with Vision Charm, it gets your opponent to trigger Relic after you've already established your graveyard. Well, if you never get to establish your graveyard, that's an issue. So after the league, I was discussing with a friend what I could possibly do to fix that. So ultimately, it's going back to Grixis, uh, Maestro's Theater over the Obscura Stormfront, or Storefront, forgive me. It is not a storm card. Uh, but you'll notice I'm back to four island, three swamps, so that way I have consistency for otherworldly gaze. Mystical Teachings is back. I was uh, convinced to try out an extra cycler instead. And I think... I just want the consistency with teachings. Being able to mill it with Otherworldly Gaze and flash it back later for the missing combo piece you need, like Songs of the Damned or Reaping the Graves, has a lot of value, especially compared to an additional cycler. Um, it's not like having extra creatures is ever bad, but losing games because the deck isn't consistent isn't 
is an issue. And I think having that extra copy of Reaping the Graves and Songs of the Damned will go a long way. So I'm going to choose to play the Mystical Teachings. You don't have to. Don't get me wrong. But I just want more consistency in the deck. I even thought about putting in two, but I couldn't figure out what else to cut. I think it'd have to be like Repository Scob or The Ploy. Um, and I don't think I want to get rid of either of those. You could try going down to like one Cabal Ritual or three Dark Ritual, which is a little sketchy. Or maybe three Lotus Petals. All of these ideas I don't love. So I ultimately decided to keep one Mystical Teachings. In the sideboard, and get Chewer over visit Vision Charm. Yes, it does less. I'm fully aware that this card is not as good as Vision Charm. It's not as versatile, I'll say. That's the, actually the correct word that I should have used. It's not as versatile. But what Ingertur does is it clears a turn one relic. And on top of that, it improves your Songs of the Dam quality or even Reaping the Graves. Uh, I think I'd rather just flat out answer those cards so that way I can develop my board plan and win. And if I need to trigger it later, I can just do the same thing that Vision Charm would, which is play out the Ingot Chewer, get them to crack it, and then do whatever I've got to do. So I can't mill myself for four, and it doesn't act as a pseudo silence, but it's much better at doing what we want to play it for, which is answering relics and things like that. So I'm back on Ingot Chewer, and if I'm going to be playing red, I might as well be playing Pyroblast, which gives us two mountains. So with Pyroblast, I've sometimes found that the problem with this card is that I only have one mountain and I end up with multiple power blasts and can't play them all in one turn. So I'm choosing to play two mountains here. Uh, you could try to get away with one and open up another cyborg slot. And that cyborg slot could be something like a second Dahadis ploy. But I, what I found is against the red decks, ploy isn't actually as good as you think it is. So if you're just playing it on turn three, you're gaining like a couple life and then they're hitting you for eight or whatever. Um, and if you play it mid combo, you should be trying to win the game and not gain life. So you really only need the one. So I've just moved away from that completely. And now I'm just only boarding in the ingot chewers to answer spell bombs or relics or whatever. Um, I just don't think you want life gain versus the red deck because it's really just about being fast and not losing to relic and gaining life. Isn't what either of those is about. Uh, we have Flaring Pain, obviously, for Prismatic Strands. This has been a cyborg staple. I think it's actually improved with Otherworldly Gaze because you can mill it and still have access to it later. Big fan of that. Dispel. So we are playing four islands, which makes Dispel the cyborg protection spell of choice. If you wanted to, and I mean, this is something you could do. You could do two Pyroblast, one Mountain, and then increase a Dispel, and then open up a cyborg spot. But I don't know what I'd actually put in that cyborg space. So I'm choosing to run three Pyroblasts instead. Uh, I think that's completely reasonable, especially when you have four islands to run three to spell. Dispel is good against Tron, which is sort of made a comeback. It's like 4% of the metagame. Dispel uh, hits crop rotation for Bazooka Bog, that sort of thing. It's mostly just that I think Pyroblast is a more effective card for the matchups we want it for. So I'm choosing to run three Pyroblast. Uh, it's already spoke to Mystical Teachings. And then Writhing Necromast. A lot of people have been low on this card recently because it's best against fairies. Uh, it's very, very, very good against fairies. And it's hard to deny that. Uh, and fairies hasn't been popular but it's starting to make a resurgence now and i think the matchup that people forget about it is is tron you're looking for ways to beat bajuka bog at instant speed that's what writhing necromast does and they don't actually have removal for it so you get to drop this five five and just attack them you know that's what i've been doing in the matchup i also change board plans sometimes if they're going to leave in a bunch of moments piece i'll board it out and then board back into a heavier combo plan you don't have to stick with one sideboard plan, and I think the versatility in options actually goes quite a long way, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. So having options in the sideboard is never a bad thing. Like some people think I don't need Flaring Pain to beat Prismatic Strands because I can just combo again or whatever. I can try to win in their upkeep. But when your opponent's playing a blue deck with Prismatic Strands, it actually becomes a really big deal, and time on the clock becomes a problem. And Flaring Pain is just an elegant solution. So you don't necessarily need this card or Writhing Necromass, but having the flexibility to have a choice is quite meaningful in my experience. So that is why I'm playing these cards. You don't need to play the same 75 as me. I don't care if you do or not. I mean, it'd be nice. Don't get me wrong. Nice little uh, ego booster or whatever. But play whatever is best for you, really. 
Uh, I always say that whenever people ask me what they should play. So that's my long-winded deck tech. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to play some Popper now. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video. Excited to play my favorite deck. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as theepicsroom.com shop or submitting a donation deck via the epicstorm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. We are on the play for match number one, and we are going to keep. I do not mind. Oh, I'm sorry. We're on the draw. My bad. Uh, Glade Cover Scout. So they're on Boggles. This is a matchup that's all about racing. We're going to play our island past the turn. Well, something I've started doing is hitting the zero key on my opponent's turn. So it just skips to their end step and then I can cycle there. So it saves me a little bit of time, less likely to time out. They have a Glade Cover Scout with Life Link. So Life Link is worded a little bit differently. So with Life Link, they can, if or, or correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, they can essentially get double uh, Life Link if they have a creature that would have it. Basically, you can stack these, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. Uh, let's cycle the imposing Vantasaur in case I draw one of those Capenna lands, and I don't. I draw Island number three. We'll play out this and pass the turn. I feel like we're not exactly close to being able to win here. Ancestral Mask. Okay, they have a 5-5. Five, five. Cartouche, this bumps it up to an 8-8. Eight, eight. So they're representing lethal next turn with one card in hand. This would knock me down to 11. I'm going to cycle the Street Wraith. Um... Hold on, should I? I'm dead to another Ancestral Mask. They have nine coming in. I'm going to cycle the Wraith. Another Songs. I was hoping to hit another one mana cycler there, and I did not. We'll play out the island. Do I want to? Let's just main phase this. I was thinking about passing, but I'll main phase it. Now we hit the theater. So this would bump me up to 10. I'm dead to any additional enchantment in that they would have in their hand. Okay, uh, I think I'm going to try to go here. Let's cast these songs. We'll ploy. Gain a little bit of life, so even if we fizzle, we can do something meaningful here. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. I think it's get rid of this Meister's Theater. We'll cast Cabal Ritual. Play the Blood Celebrant. Play the Island. We'll cast other worldly gaze, storm five. We hit a mystical teachings. The problem is that we don't have very many creatures in the graveyard. So I can jumpstart the ploy here, but it doesn't do me a lot of good. I feel like we might have botched this one. Let's cycle the stinger. And then we'll jumpstart the ploy, discarding the teachings. Maybe I should have just milled it. Discard the stinger. And here, it seems like we're in a bad spot because I don't have a swamp. I can, assuming that I live, I can flash back other really gaze in the upkeep. Four mana here. Abundant growth. Okay, I would have been dead to that. Armadillo cloak. That's exactly 15 coming in, so I'll go to one. Block the warrior token. Now they go up to 57. Okay, so like I said, in our upkeep, we're going to flash back other worldly gaze. Storm is one. Unfortunately, Maestro's Theater doesn't do it here. Draw for turn. And we lose. Okay, so we lost game number one to Bogles. I, I understand that we had three islands here. I made a choice to ditch the swamp. Like, I don't blame this on drawing three islands. When I discarded this Meister's Theater on the previous turn, it was a decision that I had made because I could have prepared for the future and decided, instead I decided I was going to try to win now. So there are small decisions in every game that end up being impactful. And I think just like blaming it on your islands there isn't exactly accurate. I guess I'll say that. Uh, the, in my experience, this is not a matchup that we want to sideboard for, so I'm just going to uh, resubmit. It is a race. Our opponent won the die roll. 
They got to do their thing, and now we get to be on the play. Game number two on the play. Sure, we'll try this. This is actually really similar to our first hand, except we have a swamp and not an island. We do have a couple of cyclers to try to hit a blue source for this other worldly gazer to hottest play. I think it's fine. Our opponent takes a mulligan to six. We'll play the swamp and pass. Forest into Glade Cover Scout. Okay. On their end step, we'll cycle the Vantasaur. Take a draw. It's Dark Ritual. Draw for turn. Let's try to hit land number two. We'll cycle the Healer and Street Wraith. No such luck. Pass the turn. Immune with Spirits. They find a forest. They play the forest into Abundant Growth. Okay. So we'll take one here. A less explosive start than what our opponent had in that previous game. Dark Ritual. I think I'm going to burn a Dark right here just trying to find my land rather than drawing and discarding. Songs. Cycle. That is a Reaping the Graves. I guess we're going for it. Dark Ritual. Blue Source, baby. Let's draw it. Not quite a Blue Source. Cabal Ritual. Songs of the Damned. Reaping. So this is going to return five. So we are leaving one friend in the graveyard. Street Wreath first and then the others. Even if we don't win this turn, we'll likely be able to gain a bunch of life and be set up to win shortly after. Here's a couple blue sources. Don't know if I needed that many. Another Street Wraith, Cycle, Theater. There's all of our lands. Cycle. Another Theater, okay. Cycle this. Or the Broken Lands. We'll play out the island, and I'm just going to... Actually, I'll cycle this first. We're not likely to hit what we need to win off this anyway. More lands. Okay. Uh, we'll get rid of a theater. We're at 24, and we'll pass the turn. They play a Rancor. Ethereal Armor. That's 6 damage coming in. We'll fall to 18. I'm going to leave Dahada's play open. Another Otherworldly Gaze. We'll pass the turn. In case they had, like... Ancestral Mask here. I didn't want to just, like, be accidentally dead. I'm at 12. Ledgewalker, they have four cards. On their end step, I'm going to jumpstart the ploy. I can double upkeep Otherworldly Gaze. Looking for a songs. Discard a land. Okay. We have three songs in our deck, and we can dig six, uh, <coughs> excuse me, six deep. We will mill all of these. Actually, is the Lotus Petal good? So the Lotus Petal might allow me to go nine deep. So I would... Actually, that's not how math works. Hmm. I could cycle this. And then cast another. Play this. No. We're going to get rid of it. Other really Gaze. And there we go. Should be a pretty easy peasy win now. Draw for turn. Play the uh we'll we'll play a swamp. Cycle so that way we get an extra mana. Songs. Cycle the healer. Songs of the damned. Reaping for five. Okay, so street rates first. One, two, three, four. Okay. So we have 20 mana. My concern here is bricking. It's not mana at the moment. Repository Scob. Blood Celebrant would just win this game now. Another Songs. Architects. Keep moving. 23 cards left. Dark Ritual. We only have two draws here to hit. There we go. Cycle. Okay, we've won. Dark Ritual. Songs. Sacrifices for a blue. We'll play Repository Scob. Exploit it. Return Songs of the Damned. Cast it. And now Reaping the Graves Storm 11. Okay. Bring everyone home. 20 mana float. Or I'm sorry. 20 cards left in deck. 40 mana floating. I love playing this deck. It's so much fun. One of the things that I find really interesting about this deck is that every game is a unique puzzle that you're trying to solve, which sounds really cheesy, but it's just true. 
And getting to solve these puzzles is what makes the deck so fascinating to me because there's so many micro decisions that all end up mattering. And that's what I was talking about in that first game where I decided to ditch the Maestro's Theater. Uh, that came back and bit me in the butt because I made a micro decision that ultimately didn't pan out. And you might look at that and go, oh, I don't want to have to play perfectly. That's fine. I'm not trying to guilt anyone into playing this deck or not playing this deck. I don't care what you play. Uh, but it makes it interesting to me. And I just want to play decks that stimulate my brain. And this certainly does that. Cycle. Another Lotus Petal. So if I play another one, we have four cyclers. We probably have enough. There's a little bit of risk involved with playing out this stinger. Okay, they just decided to concede. Let's draw a couple. We would have been fine. Okay. Game three. Hit submit. Game three, and we've opened up a stellar hand. We'll keep. Slippery Boggle. Classic open. Love the Street Wraith draw. We'll play the island and pass the turn. Abundant Growth. Okay. Rancor. So this will knock us down to 17. On their end step, we will cast the Otherworldly Gaze. Tap a blue, play the instant. We found the Swamp we want. We're going to get rid of the land number three in the Street Wraith. We'll keep this. Okay, take a draw. Play the Swamp. Pass the turn. They play the Cartouche into another Rancor. So now they have six damage coming in. I'm going to 11. So if they have land three into Ancestral Mask, I'm dead. Um, I don't know if we're really in a spot to try to win here. We're going to put some creatures in the graveyard because I need that to happen if I'm going to win. Another Otherworldly Gaze. We'll cast that in the upkeep. Get rid of the lands and the Street Wraith. Take a draw. Like I said, I'm dead to Mask. I'm dead to Ethereal Armor. Let's cycle Street Wraith. Island. I can flashback other really gaze here. Or I can cycle. You might also be saying, Bryant, you could songs double flashback other really gaze. That doesn't leave us with a whole lot of mana. Tough call here. I think I'm going to flashback. Blood Celebrant. Don't think I can afford to keep that. We're going to mill all of them. So it's 39 cards. Our songs now make seven. Not exactly in a great spot. Songs. Cycle the Architects. We hit the Reaping. Now I need to draw into another Songs. Or Cabal Ritual. Cycle. Come on, deck, please. Please. Come on. Cycle. That's a bummer. So you can return a whole lot of creatures here, but I fizzled and I'm likely dead. Okay, we're not going to return Street Wraiths because they're going to hit me for a bunch of damage and I won't be able to use them. That's a bummer. Pass the turn. Alright, they have 7 damage and I'm at 9. So I am dead to a light breeze here. They tap for a green, commune with spirits. They find Rancor, that is in fact lethal. Okay, and just like that, we are losing round number one to Bogles. So you, a lot of people are like, Bryant, you lost to Bogles. You should be playing Darkness. And I think that is a decision you can make. And I'm not trying to make excuses for a loss here. I'm trying to explain my thought process. Uh, you can play something like Darkness, which would buy you time, which is fine. Uh, like it prevents damage. You could also look at it as a glorified explorer, assuming that you even have a land. But in order to play something like Darkness, what are you cutting? Or what are you boarding out? Because you have to think about decks from a whole approach and your plans with them. And when you play something like Darkness, you're boarding out Otherworldly Gaze. You're boarding out a Cycler. You're boarding out a Ritual. And with doing so, you're making your deck weaker. Uh, you're less likely to actually win when you're trying to win. And I think that is actually a problem. Here, we went... 34 cards deep into our deck, and we found one Songs, one Reaping. Uh, we still had a Teachings and three of each of the other cards. So almost 50% of the way through, we saw a little bit below average. And assuming we even lived, it's not going to let me draw. 
Okay, well, we lost the Boggles. I mean, this is a matchup I typically feel like we should win. I do feel favored. Unfortunately, we lost the die roll, and it ended up showing in games one and three. It happens. I'm not going to let it bother me. Chin up, and let's win the rest. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Match number two, let's bounce back. We're on the play. Keep. Play the theater. Auto yield, and we'll go grab an island. Pass. Remote isle. Not really sure what they're playing. We'll cast Gaze in the upkeep. We're going to mill all of these. Take a draw. Reaping the graves. That's a good one. Cycle. Pass the turn. The opponent has lost connection. I guess they are not interested in facing Cycle Storm. Uh, I guess that's one way to win a match. I don't even know what they're playing. I will put their deck as Remote Isle. Um, geez. Eight Cycle Storm that much, huh? We are 1-0. and oh. I'm sorry, we're 1-1. One one. <laughs> uh... Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and mana tokens as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Let's try that again. We are going into match three now on the play. We have another really gaze. We have songs, reaping. I mean, this has everything we want other than lands. If this lotus petal was a land, I would keep. Unfortunately, I believe we're supposed to mulligan that. Here we've opened up a three lander. I'm sorry, a four lander. My bad. Um... I don't really like mulliganing super low with this deck, so I will begrudgingly keep. Looks like our opponent is also taking a mulligan. We'll start on a theater. Go grab an island and pass the turn. Mountain and a swift spear. So not exactly the matchup we wanted for keeping a slow hand without cyclers. We'll take a draw. That was a good one. Go grab another island. Pass. That might have been our best draw. Okay, they play the second prowess creature. They have four cards in hand. We'll take one damage back down to 20. Otherworldly Gaze. I think I'm actually going to keep this Otherworldly Gaze. <clears throat> draw for turn. We'll play a land and pass. On their end step, we get to double Otherworldly Gaze, which is why I decided to keep this one copy. Chain Lightning, I'll go to 17. Another Chain Lightning, okay. They have two cards in hand. Getting in for six, so this puts me to eight. That's the Lightning Bolt. Do you have the Fire Blast too? They do not. Okay, so we will flash this back. We'll get rid of all of these. And cast another other Whirly Gaze. We get Teachings and Reaping. We have one, two, three, four creatures. So unfortunately, I don't think the teachings is good enough. We'll get rid of that and keep the reaping. Draw the reaping. So this is a risky play, but I think it's what we have to do here. I'm going to flash back the gaze, hoping to hit a songs plus creatures. We get creatures. I don't think I'm actually allowed to keep this reaping. We need to hit mana. We are 33% of the way through the deck and it did not find a songs. We did find teachings, but I wasn't allowed to keep it because our creature counts so low. This is definitely like not typical, I guess I'll say. Um, and we found an extra reaping anyway. We've lost. We can pick this up. So we are over 33% of the way through and we had five creatures. Three. 
I guess Blood Celebrant for five, six, seven. So seven would be a little over a quarter. A little bit under. I mean, it's fine enough, I guess. All right, so we're facing red. I do think you're supposed to bring in Ingot Chewer. One thing that I found about this matchup is I think you actually want the Street Rate despite it losing life because it helps so much with speed. Probably get away with only one mountain. I think we just take out the Horror of the Broken Lands. Like, you're never beating them via beatdown. So we'll bring in the mountain for land number 12. Cut one island. Try this out. Okay, let's, you know, do better this time on the play. Keep. I mean, I don't love Double Chewer. I would have liked one in a cycler, but I don't think you're supposed to mulligan this. We will go grab an island. Pass the turn. Island into Epicure. Or, I'm sorry, Mountain into Epicure. We'll play our Mountain. Pass. Land number two. They swing for one, so we go down to 19. They play their prowess creature. We'll cast the really gaze. Mill the street wraith and the pedal. I think we want to keep the reaping. Cycle the healer. Upkeep. Let's flash back. Don't need another island. We'll get rid of these. Draw for turn. Teachings. Let's see if we can cycle into a land. No such luck. We'll pass the turn. Reckless Impulse, Lightning Bolt, Implementation of Combustion. They play land three. Ouch. So I'm going to go to 14 and they're attacking for four. They have four cards in it. I could just be dead here. I feel like I'm pretty far away from being able to win. Cycle. There's our Black Source. So this puts me up to 11. And I'm going to use the Ingot Chewer here. Get another creature to the graveyard. Destroy their blood token. Maybe that helps. Opponent, I need you to not murder me. Not murder. What are the odds I don't die here? Rebirth, Gav Blast. I think the only thing that kills me here... Actually, no. Land Bolt Bolt could do it. Uh, Fire Blast does it. They play a Swift Spear. Okay. Interesting. Take four of them at seven. Draw for turn. Otherworldly gaze. Unfortunately, I can't use that here. How many creatures do we have? Ingot chewer, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Dark ritual. Teachings. Go get a songs. Cast it. This is only a songs for four. Reaping the graves. So I think I'm actually supposed to pick up Triple Street Wraith here because mana is a choke point. Cycle. Dark Ritual. Cycle. Lotus Petal might do it here if we find it. Come on, Lotus Petal, please. Basic Island would also work. Cycle. Come on, deck. Cycle. Blood Celebrant does not do it. Um, we are dead. So I can Reaping the Graves and return a bunch of creatures, but I have one black mana floating, and I can't cycle Street Wraith. If I had more black mana floating, I could Blood Celebrant Repository Scob, uh, because I can gain a life off the theater, but this is just a, uh, a perfect storm of not working here. So, uh, they got me. Bummer. We are one and two. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. On the play for match four. Okay. Play theater, we'll go grab an island. So obviously one and two is not the record I want, especially with the one being someone just giving up, right? Um, I think that Match number one could have gone either way. We happen to lose. And then match two, red is favored against us anyway. And it looks like we're facing Turbo Fog here, by the way. But there's also a couple spots where I feel like we had opportunities to win and the cards just 
didn't fall our way. We were slightly, uh, oh, it's not Turbo Fog, it's Tron, okay. Uh, Tron is a bad matchup, so I'm sort of interested in trying a couple different approaches here um, regarding boarding. Like, we can board in the Writhing Necromass, for example. They are a deck that has instant speed crop rotation, so uh, that can get Bajooka Bog, which is bad. They play Impulse. If they give me any window where crop rotation is down, I'm going to try to go. They play another Urza's Mine, and they're just passing. Cycle of Vantasaur. Um, let's tap the Swamp, in case I draw into other Whirly Gaze. Cycle Stinger. Theater. Even if I wanted to go, we don't have Reaping. Play the Theater. Grab an Island. We'll pass. Nothing on their end step. They just had the bog in hand, huh? Uh, so I could try to cycle into a reaping here, or I can just accept losing six cre or five creatures? Six creatures. No, it's five. Uh, I'm going to let it go. They can flicker this, by the way, so it's not perfect for us. I'm going to sit on the street rates. Another songs. They play a map. So they have Tron next turn. I'll cycle. Repository Scob, I would not have hit Reaping. Cycle. Cycle. Okay. 38 cards. Cycle a healer. Let's cycle Vantasaur. Other really gay. So we could actually pick up a Reaping here off of a Repository Scob. We'll mill. I'll burn a dark ritual. Unwind. Okay. That's fine. Past the turn, they do get to use map. And now they have Tron. Unwind is only a one of, by the way. They play Muldrifter. Tap for two, they cycle a remote isle. Oh, our opponent might have been on Tron previously. Okay. They just didn't want to face like. Oh no! I was too busy talking. I was supposed to upkeep this other really gaze. Awkward. Okay, so we did find the reaping. I can get it back with the scob. Uh, May 10. Okay. Lotus petal. Oh, did I not put it? Oh my god, I put it on top of my deck. No way did I do that. Oh, wow. It's not there. Ah, oh, wow. I just punted. There's no reaping the graves in our graveyard. I, I auto put it on top. I am so bad. Th this should have been a win. Ah, uh, that's painful. So I don't like other really gaze in this matchup just because you're playing directly in the bog. I'm gonna take those out. And that brings us down to 62. You can board in Pyroblast. Just depends on what you want your board plan to be. Um. I'm also fine taking out the Blood Celebrant if you're boarding in the mountains. I just think that you're leaning less into the combo, which means you can also take out Lotus Petal. That's 63. I think Repository Scob is fine in this matchup. I don't think it's really a ploy matchup. They're not exactly pressuring your life total. We don't need the Flaring Pain. I brought that in on accident. Um, can't believe I didn't put that to the graveyard. Ah. Oh. And then Teachings, I think, is just like... Really costly versus a deck that has Dispel, Red Blast. I mean, we're off that plan anyway. We're really trying to either win when their shields are down or beat them down. So I'm going to try this. Another thing that I like about this is when you're boarding Double Mountain, you will have games where you can just play out Stingers and attack because the way that Tron boards... They do have Blue Blast coming in for your Stingers, but what they don't have is actual creature removal outside of Blue Blast. I can't believe I did. I put that card on top of my deck. I just didn't think, because when you see Reaping the Graves, 99 times out of 100, probably more than that, you want to put it on top, and I just defaulted to putting it on top of the deck, even though I knew that I wanted it in my graveyard. Ah. Oh. All right, so now we need a 3-0 our opponent. This is a good hand. Keep. Could this be a turn one Necromass? Dark Ritual. Cycle, cycle, cycle. That's three. 
I don't know. I think I'm just going to pass for now. I don't think we need to try to turn one it. Hers is mine. Cycle. Island. Take a draw. Another Necromass. Okay. I'm going to just play it slow. These are the draws we want in the matchup. Driving Isle. Cycle. Cycle. And we can definitely play double Necromass on our turn. Take a draw. Cycle this. Dark Ritual. Cycle. Again. So now we're going down to one black. Songs. So now we can play Necromass. Play Necromass. Cycle this. Cycle. Play land for turn. Songs of the Damned. I shouldn't have played the land, because now I can't actually win with Singers this turn. Because we boarded out Lotus Petals and the Blood Celebrant. There's a mountain. Cycle. Actually, we're going to return everyone. I'm going to play out the horror. Go. <laughs> there we go. Nice Bajooka Bog. We'll play a mountain. Attack. No blocks. We will cycle. Four triggers. Okay. Cycle the architects. Cycle imposing Vantasaur. And that is 20. Damage. Okay. We got game number two, but now we need to get game three. Hit submit. Winning game three would make me feel a little bit better about throwing away game number one like that. So your opponent has seen the Writhing Necromass beatdown plan. You could board back into the turbo combo shell. Um, and I mean, I don't think that's wrong. I think that is a very valid thing to do. I'm going to keep with the beatdown plan. I don't have a real reason why, but I think it's likely to be more effective. My opponent could also be just like boarding in a bunch of moments pieces right now. But we have dispels and pyroblasts and other things. Game three, we've opened up double Necromass and Cyclers Keep. We do have to find a Black Source, but this hand, I don't think is one that you can get rid of. And a very fast Mulligan to five for the opponent. Okay. Driving Isle. We'll take a draw. Pyroblast. Play out the Isle. Pass. They play a Power Plant. We'll cycle a Dinosaur. Looking for a Black Source. Songs of the Damned. Take a draw. Cycle another Dino. No such luck. Discard. A ball ritual. They have versus mine into network terminal. Take a draw. Another reaping. Cycle the Draneth. Come on, deck. This is how we lose. They play a power plant. Three cards in hand. Jeez Louise. Cycle. Discard. Now they have Tron. And there's a Swamp. We'll pass. I could try to play out a Writhing Necromass here, but it involves casting Songs of the Damned, and I don't want to do that. They have four cards. Cycle the Stinger. Cycle Healer. And now we have six cards. In Graveyard. Play a Necro. <clears throat> and that just resolved. Interesting. Mole Drifter. I can't counter that. I don't have a red source. Another network terminal. Three mana here. Oh, they decided against whatever they were going to do. I'll cycle architects into another island. Draw. Dark Ritual. Let's attack with the necro. See if they do anything here. They have five cards in hand. They go to 15. Play another Necromass. Pass the turn. They ephemerate their Mole Drifter. So they were thinking about doing that on their main phase. I mean, this is insane value for them. Another Mole Drifter. They have 10 cards in hand right now. <laughs> kind of insane. They play another Thriving Isle. Down to 9 cards in hand. Okay, on their end step, we'll cycle the Granite Stinger. Into another Dark Ritual. They discard Moments Peace Remote Isle. Attack. So they can flashback Moments Peace. You got it. 
Dark Ritual. They prohibit. I'm going to cycle in case I draw into Dispel. Look at that. We will cast Dispel. What spell? Dispel. Cycle. Dark Ritual. Cycle. So we have a, a chance to win here. I have to not play a land because we need a mountain in order to win. There's our mountain. Songs of the Damned. Reaping the Graves. So definitely returning a Drenus Stinger here. Street Wraith and then some others. There's two other Reapings in the Grave. I only have one other Reaping the Graves. So I'm actually not super likely to win here. Cycle. Another Necromass. But if they're willing to discard Moments Piece, I feel like they have more. Cycle. Again. Another Necro. Cycle. This spell was a good draw. Let's cycle the Architects. Hmm. Cycle Stinger, I guess. A little bit nervous about cycling the Street Wraith in case they have like Rolling Thunder in their deck. Cycle the Architects. I guess I'll play double Necro here. Because next turn I could have Dispel Power Blast for their Moments Beast. This puts me to 11 if they have the Rolling Thunder. Pneumonic Wall. So this gets Ephemerate. The Impulse. Switch to their end step. We'll cycle the healer and deal them 1 down to 6 damage. Or 6 life. Another Pyro. Okay. Upkeep. I'm going to cycle this in the main phase because if I draw into the other mountain, we could have double pyro backup. They're attempting to moment's peace. Oh, it's uh, Pulse of Marasa. I will dispel this. If they have Weather the Storm in hand, they can gain nine here. But I don't think nine is enough to stay alive. So now we go to combat and they're going to moment's peace me. Yep. I feel like I might have taken the bait on that Pulse of Marasa. I don't have another Dispel in the deck, so that just happens. We'll pass the turn. Rizuka Bog. That doesn't matter at this point. We know that they have an Ephemerate, so we want to save Pyroblast for killing the Pneumonic Wall. This puts me to six. Five mana. We have to let Moldrifter happen. Because we can't let Ephemerate happen. Looks like they're going to cast it here. We will attempt to cast Pyroblast. Oh, sorry. Uh, cancel. Destroy target permanent if it is blue. Pyroblast on Pneumonic Wall. And if this resolves, it would fizzle the Ephemerate. They have four cards in hand, and they haven't really played too many counter spells this game. Three mana for a Ghostly Flicker. Yeah, that's annoying. This is definitely a spot where not having Double Mountain bit me in the butt. They're going to return Ghostly Flicker with the Pneumonic Wall. The Pyroblast will fizzle, and then the Ephemerate fizzles as well. So they have one colored source here. Oh, they have Energy Refractor. Okay. So that changes things a little bit. They have two colored sources now. On their end step, we'll cycle twice, putting them to three. At this point, we just want to draw into more creatures. Dark Ritual. Draw for turn. Not what we wanted. We'll attempt to go to combat. So this is them flashing back moments piece. Or casting the one that they have in hand. Okay. So technically, they have lethal on board here. We do have a blast for their mole drifter. Cycle this. We would need to hit double cycler in order to create lethal here. Does that do it? That does it. Dark Ritual. Reaping for three. This is going to do it. <laughs> uh, I wasn't even thinking about reaping number four as an out. And we win the match. All right. So it looks like we've turned the script. And the only two wins I can get in this league are against Tron. Granted, one of them was a concession, uh, but that was a really sweet match. Uh, Necromast certainly did a lot of work here. I know a lot of people have been down on this card recently, but I think it's still very good. Um, 
two and two, not the world's best record. Let's see if we can get the next one and just finish with a positive one. With card hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as seven tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at the epicstorm.com slash decklist. The fifth and final round, let's get this one and finish with a positive record. Keep, 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 keep. This hand is terrific. Okay. Moistro's Theater. We're going to go grab an island. Pass the turn. Great Furnace. Okay, so we get a chance to redeem ourselves versus Red. I would like to, you know, make a comeback here. Other really Gaze. We did not hit the land. We were Whoa, I did not mean to do that. We're apparently drawing a creature I don't want. Damn. That was an accident. The lag on this has not been great today. So we basically just time walked ourselves versus the red deck. Uh, not ideal. Flame Breather. Can't believe I did that. Ah, oh, jeez, this league is such a nightmare. Take a draw. I mean, that was actually decent if I can draw into a black source. There we go. Pass. We're at 19. They have six cards in hand. A Reckless Impulse. Gav Blast, Synthesizer. Come on, no land three. So they swing for two. We, we're likely getting another turn now, so I'm not going to uh, try to win here, I don't think. Cycle the Stinger. Another Reaping. I'm going to just discard the Teachings. They played the Synthesizer, I follow the 15. They now have Metalcraft for this Galvanic Blast. They reveal another synth. They drew a land for turn. They blast me. They bolt me. Sure. Is that lethal? It is. Wow. I should have went last turn. I didn't think I would die from there. So them drawing the mountain for turn killed me. I'm not convinced we would have gotten there, but... Yeah, this was a chain of bad draws. I think it was correct to wait there, but clearly I was punished. Bring in a mountain and three chewer. Take out the horror of the broken lands. And an island. That's, I mean, there's a couple things that weren't wrong in that game. I'm not going to pin it on one thing. I mean, I also put a creature on top that I didn't want that just delayed us the entire game. But I'm not sure if, obviously, it looks bad that I decided to wait and then was punished. But I'm not sure if we would have won anyway. Opponent has Mountain into Monastery Swift Spear. Like, we were at 15 or 16. That's pretty impressive. We drew the Swamp. We need more creatures at the moment. Otherworldly Gaze. Play the Swamp. And I'm going to just pass. Testing Flame Breather. They get in for one. I go to 18. I think I'm going to cycle the Street Wraith looking to hit more cyclers. And I did not take a draw. Okay, I'm going to try to do something this turn. We'll cast the gaze looking to hit mill creatures. That's exactly what we did. This was perfect. Dark Ritual. That is what Otherworldly Gaze is in the deck to do. Cycle off a red mana. So that way if I draw into a, a horror, I could continue to cycle. We'll cast Songs. So I get songs again here. I think I'm supposed to. I was thinking about holding priority, but I don't think I'm supposed to. Returning six creatures. Okay, cycle street wraith. Lotus petal. Healer. This brings us down to 12. We do have to be aware that if we go down to four, we could die to fire blast. Or down to five. Because of the flame breather. We have two more draws. I'm going to just bring these back. Play the island. We'll cast Otherworldly Gaze. I mean, we want the songs. But it means that we have to mill into another reaping. Play Petal. Play Petal. Blue. We'll cast Otherworldly Gaze. It's from 10. We're going to mill all of these. 
Come on, deck. This is going to bring us to 50% of the way through. No hits. Ah, oh, geez. We're going to fizzle. I can feel it. We have one draw here. And we're putting the fourth songs of the damned into the graveyard. We have one draw. Three reaping the graves. Mystical teachings will not do it. Draw. Damn. We are likely dead now. That's a bummer. We went very deep into our deck. And they have Relic. I mean, I'm glad that I went for it. Uh, we were we just fizzled. My opponent is now BMing me in chat. Sure. Um, I don't know. Like, I did what I could there. It just didn't pan out. Yep. We are dead. Boy, that would mean that would have been decent last turn. Play it. We brought it in Bread Blast. Okay. We'll gain a life. I don't even know why I'm still playing this. We've lost. That's the turn. Another Swift Spear. They have three in hand. A Voldaren Epicure. Land for turn. They swing for three. Cycle Healer. Cycle Stinger. I was hoping to draw something bad there so I could discard it, deploy, and gain life. That's actually really awkward. Ah, uh, Dak, why are you like this? We only have one songs left. I'm not allowed to discard the songs. And they have another blast. So odd. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, we got got. So... It was a weird league. We had some consistency, consistency issues still. Even with the one teachings, we struggled to find Reaping the Grave, Songs of the Damned, etc. Uh, it was a rough one. I'm not going to pretend that this was a great league. I think that I might even want to move up to two teachings. I'm not sure. I'd have to find... I'd have to explore more, I guess, because... Having teachings be millable for otherworldly gazes a lot, it's very good. Um, and I think that it's tough. Um, because there was a couple times this league where teachings didn't look so good because I was low on creatures, but that's not really a fault of teachings. That's a I saw 50% of my deck and saw six or seven creatures. That's not a fault of teachings. That's just, once again, variance. This Pauper is a format that has variance in it because it is a lower power level than something like Legacy. It is not low power level. It's just lower than Legacy. And your decks aren't as consistent. So I'd like to make that point. But I think maybe I want second teachings. Um, it's a card to look at. I'm not sure what the cut is. Feel free to let me know what you think what the cut is down below if you would make any changes to the main deck or sideboard i'm certainly interested in hearing that i love playing this deck uh i understand that you know this wasn't a great league but hopefully you still enjoyed watching it i mean i think the match versus tron was really really good that was a great match but you know we sort of fell victim to red red i don't know i'm surprised the pop format panel hasn't done anything yet but here we are um that's what I've got. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Keep storming. Hey, Brand Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.